guy. I don't remember his name. What's his name, Rod? Craig Rochelle. Craig, Craig Rochelle. Yeah. Anyway, Craig was talking about the four tiers of effectiveness. That's what he called it on the podcast, but the podcast is actually titled Four Tiers of Efficiency, if you want to go listen to it. And um, what, he talks about, what he's talking about is categorizing <coughs> your tasks into, you know, four different tiers. Now, to preface this, one thing he said in the beginning is that I can guarantee you that all of you have this problem, this problem. The problem is you feel like you have more things to do in a day than time to do them. And everybody does that. No matter how little or big, you know, the stuff you have to do is, people tend to bog themselves down with a lot of tasks that aren't um, relevant not relevant to the you know the macro level calls or, or what you're trying to, to accomplish and so what he says is tier one when you start categorizing these all of your tasks into four tiers you have to put them in one of these four tiers number one is mission critical so this is what he's talking about is you, you have to put your your most important tasks that if you don't do them the whole ship sinks like, if Conor McGregor doesn't talk smack, UFC sinks. That's what he says, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, probably not true, because it's there before again. But he does make a lot of money, right? Anyway, the, the concept is mission critical would be things that, if you don't do them, the whole ship sinks. All right. Two are things that are very important, but not, but not vital. They're not, they're not going to, you know, if you don't do them right away, the ship's not necessarily going to sink, but they're very important to the overall calls, and they're still things that are created from within the entity or from within your own desire to get things done, okay? These are not things that other people want you to do, like outside of your organization or outside of your, you know, your own desires or what, you ha what you're trying to accomplish. Number, I'm going to skip down to number four. Number four, so I almost think you could just do three tiers, personally. Because three and four kind of mesh together for me. Rob, maybe we can dialogue on what the importance of three was. But with four, it, what he's talking about are things that people from the outside are requesting. So, uh, like for me right now, like a lot of agents around the country will message me on Facebook, all these things, you know, like questions. They'll send me their newsletters, they'll send me mailers, they'll ask me about Facebook ads, they'll ask me about all this stuff, and, um, you know, I, I genuinely want to help them. I, I enjoy it, and I think there is some good that comes from it because I'm building a network by building friendships and helping people. But if it came down to what do I have time for, that's going to be my fourth tier. That's going to be like the, the last thing. Like I have to get, you have to get to a point where you don't do that. So another thing would be, um, you know, and so where tier three I think would, would fall would be when, and I, I'm, I kind of fogged out on tier three. I'm ADD. But on tier three, I think it's more like when customers are asking for things, like, like little, little stuff, like, people who are paying you something or who are part of your business or your organization uh, are paying or they're you know, part of that in a bigger way than just being an outside person that you're trying to build a relationship with. Um, when they're asking for something, that would be more like your tier three. So as far as we're concerned in here, not, you know, when, when the mission critical encounter for us would be you know, the new business the people coming in without new business. That's for each individual agent. Uh, that's mission critical. And the, and the mission for everyone is kind of different. We have, a, we have a macro level mission. We're trying to help pe as many people as possible with Medicare and health insurance and life insurance and all that. Right? That's an insurance agency mission. But each person within the mission has a different role. You know, um, whereas Stephen's role might be primarily to sell and then help other agents, you know, sale to kind of support in the more technical sense he's taking on that you know then Megan's role might be to shield people from the things that they don't have to do Megan's role like her her
her tier one may be this stuff right here. You know, but for me, when I'm looking at it, um, my, my tier one is going to be different than other people. So it, I, I really think everybody should listen to the podcast the way he phrased it because everybody has to look within them. So one exercise he did was he asked his staff what they thought <laughs> his tier one would be. So if you, had to, if you had to think of what is mission critical that I do, what would you think is mission critical that I do? Business. Everything. <laughs> Business. <laughs> Business ethics. <laughs> What, uh, what's business everything? That's, okay. It's a good one. Push, you know, push the ball. Business. All right. What, the ball what's, ball. what, what, can anybody name like anything, individual thing that I do that would be mission critical? What, what about investing in the business? Re investing in the business? Hey, car training. Yeah, I'm going to say more. To me, you're more of the forerunner of the vision. If you're not paving the road with the relationships and the vision and building those contracts and all that, then really none of us can do what we need to do on the back end. Okay. So I think that's the only thing that I do that's mission critical. Because when Craig Groeschel was talking about it, mm -hmm. it the, the big thing that he was talking about was what is mission critical for me, and he even eliminated like almost everything from being a tier one task for him. So for me, that's true. The, the tier one thing is, you know, pro, you know re, like talking to the people that are creating the products at the time, building those relationships and deciding, you know, what is the best fit and then trying to train you guys from the top down to do that and, and, and kind of setting a tone for what our objective is. That's, that's what I'm, I'm good at and that's what I'm doing. You know, a second tier for me, very important, not necessarily vital because I have a lot of you guys helping me would be the individual sales still. So the individual sales for me is a tier two because I can try to get you guys to do a lot of that for me so that I can focus on you know the bigger objective. Well, one of the things he talks about, I sent it in the new text group, by the way. I, everybody should listen to it. It's a phenomenal, Craig Rochelle yeah. is a beast when it comes to leadership and the faith circle and outside. But he talked, and you brought it up. He talks about, and this goes along with what you just said, if you have people that you train to sell, it's like when he says, I don't have to preach every Sunday anymore. Yeah. It, is it important? Yes, that I do. But it's not as vital as mission critical. So when you have trusted agents that can sell, that frees you up to focus more on mission critical and, and pay, pay that, that road. Right, right. And so if you're Zach, I mean, what my number two is would probably be his number one right now. It's sales. Mission critical for, for him, for the whole mission and for him individually, is helping as many people as possible. And for the majority of you, that, that's the number one thing. Um, however, you know, then you get people like Kelly, who's kind of like a hybrid model. She's a hybrid model. So her mission critical might be, you know, a mixture of a couple of these different things. And as organizations grow, too, you know, sometimes... You, you're, this is your mission, and then it turns into this, and then it kind of morphs over time. Um, you know, that, that could happen for anybody. That's happened for me. I, didn't, I came into it with just looking at sales, and now I, I do more than that, or I do it, it kind of, I don't do that as much. I'm doing other things. Same thing with Amy. Amy came into sales, but now it's, she's still selling, but it's a lot of the financial side, the commissions, the math, the budget. Um, so... <laughs> So there's, you know, there's, there's different things that can change over time. But you, you always, if you can identify these, you can, you can begin to weed out what are these things for you. What are those things? For me, I said outside, I guess, because I related to what he was saying very much so in that there are a lot of people that now want me to do X or, you know, Y or Z or these different things that, you know, there's a point where I'm like, okay, this is taking away from my primary focus, and so I have to reel some of that stuff back in. It's not to say that I'm not ever going to do those things, but if you can, you know, what what he was talking about too is kind of an exercise when you get into a really busy season. So AEP for me is I shut down all of this during AEP. Anything tier four, I'm not focusing on at all. Anything in that light that's not, that I don't have to do right now, I'm not focusing on because that way I can shift a lot more focus to these two things. 
and then I'm taking these on as I can, but I'm also probably relying on some of the others because my tier three would be customer service uh, stuff. You know, it's not to say that it's not important for me, but hopefully I can start to, I can begin to shift some of that to somebody else. But your tiers are different. So if you go listen to that podcast, it's very good. You can listen to it, you know, anytime. And I, I would urge all of you, you know, to don't just rely on me or Rob to spew out something in the morning. Um, if you listen to music, you know, uh, that's great. I love listening to music. A lot of the people that I listen to that, that are, you know, motivational, inspirational, or substance-based, you know, um, content. content creators talk about you listen to about 10 minutes of music right before work. The rest of your commute or your, you know, downtime in the car should be used to listen to something that's relevant to you and organizing your life and obliterating the chaos. And it's because your, your chaos in your mind is not the same as what mine is. It could be more family related. It could be outside variables that you're trying to organize. And so you, the content that I listen to might not be the same thing that would be relevant to who you are. If you're young and getting married and don't have any kids, there's probably a lot of content out there that's designed for somebody like you uh, or, you know, Zach being single, Johnny being single, that's different than, you know, me and Steven and Rob are probably listening to things related to having a wife and kids and, and managing, you know, a lot of that, those different things. So a lot of different uh, stuff out there. I would really, really urge you all to focus on that. So when I'm, I'm talking about this, I don't even know if I'm doing it justice at all because you need to be pouring, you know, really, really good things and not all motivation, not all inspiration, but just, you know, substantive content about how to, um, how to organize your life in an efficient manner, how to, if you're, if you're like low man on the totem pole somewhere, you can really uh, take on, you know, content that, that teaches you how to uh, make yourself, you know, an extrovert in the workplace or outgoing to take on more tasks than you are. Maybe you don't, maybe you're not overworked, maybe you don't have enough to do, but you want to, you know, go out and do more, uh, figure it out. But there, there's, there's all this different content out there that everyone should be doing. You know, I, I for a long time, Every time I'm commuting or doing something or driving, I'm just listening to rock and roll, man. And man, it'll get you fired up. But it, there's no substance to it. Uh, so, you know, consume something of value, I think, would be very important. Uh, I'm not going to talk about, you know, sales and all that this morning. It's Monday morning. You know, what I was looking at was efficiency and trying to make, the, make hay while the sun is shining, because that's what's happening during AEP. And I think uh, to do that, you everybody has to get in the right headspace, get the external factors out. What did uh, what did uh, Leo say in, in that movie? He said, if you're having all those problems at home, pick up the phone your, and start dialing. Because your wife thinks you're a loser. <laughs> your wife thinks you're a loser. Good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. But you know what? What we're really talking about is how to get yourself in the right headspace to organize your time. Know, to where you can make hay while the sun is shining. And, you know, I, I don't have like, I didn't sit here and prepare something. I was listening to that this morning. Uh, but I think everybody could, could listen to, even some of you that are listening to a lot of motivation. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, listen to all this, like, yeah, yeah, fire up. But then they have no, like, substance to what they're saying. There's no, uh, you know, there's nobody telling you the steps or things to do. But there's so much stuff out there in the world to consume and, and better yourself. So I would focus on that and try to pour good, valuable content in, a little bit of motivation, and a little bit of rock and roll. Um, and then you'd be good to go. Right, Stephen? That's right. The difference between having a hype man and the actual speaker. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit of a hype, but for me, the hype could just be the rock and roll. I just need a substance. Okay, now rock and roll. Yeah. I can't remember who I listened to one time, but he said, uh, I want to say it was, it may have been Grant Cardone that said it one time, like he was, yeah, it was, it was in the Be Obsessed or Be Average audio book I was listening to, he was talking about how he organizes his morning and what he does, he always listens to something that's substantive or content, like that is actually teaching him something about whether it's real estate or insurance or their own personal finances or family dynamics or time efficiency and management, 
anything like that that creates a practice that you can take to heart and try to utilize, try to cut out the bad crap. And then the last 10 minutes he listens to, he would say he listens to Eminem for like 10 minutes every morning. I can't listen to the same artist 